ambulance were just kind of sitting around, chugging some beers down, weary and wasted, partly pissed. They were often to be found sitting around like this. It was kind of boring. A couple of the guys were snoring. They were waiting for the drugs they'd paid for that morning. And at last, when they were lethargic and loaded, the front door exploded. Now listen up, cunts. This ain't a publicity stunt. I know you've all been through the drill before. Just lie the fuck face down on the floor. Oi, you too, and the rest of your low-life crew. The dealers' hearts were rattling. They sat up with a jolt, but they may as well have been battling a rampant lightning bolt. With a handsome smile, and in his own mad dog style, the rebel took the floor for a while. Now I'm going to have me some real fun. And yes, this is a real gun. Come on, cunts, I haven't got all day. Now do exactly what the fuck I say. Yes, even that blonde chick on the floor in the corner. Now don't say I didn't warn you. Resplendent in his element, the rebel rocked the scene. Ain't nothing quite as sexy as the rebel when he's mean. The dealers were no competition. They gave no opposition. They could see the rebels on a mission, and they just couldn't fight in the half-tanked condition. Now, you dumb fuck thugs, give me all your money and give me all your drugs. Dumbstruck and gobsmacked, the dumb fucks were really whacked. They didn't react until much too late. The rebel doesn't like to wait. And one wound up with a gun in his face. With a swagger, but oh so deadly on the trigger, the rebel began to snigger. He was having the time of his life. This was the kind of afternoon he liked. Start talking, cunt. I know you got what I want. I'm not going to ask again. Instead, I'm just going to shoot one of your ass off friends. Shaking and quaking, the dealer began to stutter. He was really just a kid, still living with his mother. Then he spoke, mortally concerned, aware that so much was resting on his words. He gave the only answer he was able, putting all his cards on the table. We haven't got any drugs. Fast as fuck, right out of luck. The bloke was decked with the biggest slam he'd taken yet. Dropped flat on his back, crack. Skull crushed open, crack. Arm broken, crack. The rebel still joking, crack. The gun fired once, the kid was choking, crack. He died with a grunt. Wrong answer, cunt. So, what do you think happens next, my friend? Do you think one by one they get shot in the head? The problem with knowing where this story is going is you tend to assume, as most people do, that there was only one rebel there in the room. But remember that blonde chick from before? The one in the corner sitting on the floor? She's only been mentioned once since the start, and she's been kind of quiet till we get to this part. The blonde chick spoke up with a steady voice, not too loud, but just enough noise to take the attention away from the kill, not cowering scared like most people will. She said what she had to say to save the day. Look, the drugs are on their way. We'll be happy to share them with you if you'll stay. They're due for delivery around about three. Come over here, sit next to me. And then, with a sexy sigh, she did that thing girls can do with their eyes. A dip and a flutter, coy, looking down. She held the rebel by the dick, spellbound. Oh, what the hell, I'll stick around. Deflated, elated, his temper all over. He started to think he was Casanova. And now my story's over. I won't keep you much longer. Tell me, tell me, which rebel was stronger? The mad dog who broke down the door? Or the chick in the corner on the floor?